Hi, I'm Nicolene Peck and I'm a parenting expert. I'm also a previous foster parent for troubled youth who used to come to my home. They were all between the ages of 18 and 12 years old. And I've raised four children of my own, all very strong-willed. So let me just say, I've seen my share of emotional outbursts. Things that look like, you don't care. And things that look like, <laughs> and they just stare me down. There are so many things that people do when they're being emotional. Some of them seclude themselves and they won't talk. Some of them say many, many things that they'll regret later, right? That's just how people respond when they get into the emotional part of their brain. Well, in this video, we are going to talk about how to deal with emotional outbursts in children. Emotions are important. There's a lot of things that we feel and a lot of things that we worry about. There are different sensations that we get. Sometimes we feel concern, sometimes we feel angry. And these are real things that happen with children. And we don't want to ever make a person think they can't share something they feel. Obviously they can but the way that they share it with another person can be the difference between freedom and bondage. So if I feel like I have to yell at another person every time I get frustrated or somebody makes me angry, then I'm actually in a place of bondage. But if I know the skills for how to communicate with people, when I have something I don't agree with, maybe a skill that I call disagreeing appropriately, and I'm understood when I use this skill, then I've been able to share my feelings with another person and be understood and not have to feel like I was trapped by my emotions. So that is freedom. We want our children to feel freedom. So here are four things that we can do in order to promote that freedom for them and to help them grab on to the skills that they need in order to not have emotional outbursts, but instead, just have good, solid, open understanding. Number one, pre-teaching. This means that we teach them ahead of time what they need to succeed. So what skills does a person need in order to succeed at handling their emotions and not choosing to have an outburst? Well, one skill I already mentioned is disagreeing appropriately. When a person disagrees appropriately, they look at the person, keep a calm face, voice, and body, say that they understand the other person's point of view, they share their point of view, then they listen to what the other person has to say, and they say okay, and drop the subject. This particular skill works for all ages of people. This is an adult skill, it's a healthy communication skill, and it's something children can use as young as two years old, provided they're verbal enough. So number one, we pre-teach them. We tell them ahead of time all the skills that they need and we tell them how to evaluate themselves and put themselves back on track. They can start learning these things when they're very young. Now they won't be perfect at it. You've got to remember that because young children have very small prefrontal cortexes and their brains can only problem solve to a certain point. It takes them lots of practice, lots of experiences, lots of training before it becomes a habit to always have self-control and use the skills that they're planning on using. So the second thing I want to share with you is skills. There are four basic skills that a person needs in order to be in control of themselves the majority of the time. Those four skills are following instructions, accepting no answers and criticism, accepting consequences, and disagreeing appropriately. Each one of these skills has a skill set, just like I shared with you when I told you what it meant to disagree appropriately. If a person learns all four of those skill sets, they can properly analyze themselves so that they can decide where it is that they fall into those emotional traps, because that's what they are traps. 
the children need to know that they can stop themselves at certain points. And if they have triggers in place, meaning that they know, oh, as soon as I feel like I'm so angry, or as soon as I start closing my eyes, I go, oh, I'm, I'm getting angry. That's not the angry thing. What is my skill? I need to tell myself no, go through that four step process of giving myself a no answer. I need to go talk to mom about it, maybe disagree appropriately with her about it. And we can lead them on at first until they can do those things by themselves. That's what a good leader does. That's what a good parent does. So what happens if they don't use their skills? What happens if they don't disagree appropriately and they decide to go out of control anyway? Well, they are children, they're not perfect, and it's probably gonna happen. In fact, we should bank on that happening. How could we even fulfill our role as parents and teach them if they never had anything to teach? Children aren't perfect, so we need to be prepared to correct them. There's gotta be a lot of consistency if a person is going to learn to control their own emotional outbursts. They have to have cause and effect made very clear for them, which means that they've got to see when I choose this, this is exactly what happens. And they know ahead of time, no surprises, no shocks or tricks or strategy, just this is what happens. These are the words mom or dad says, and this is what I earn every time. And on the opposite side, if mom and dad tell me this is what I need to do and I do it exactly, this is the positive that will happen, which means the praise happens, the good feelings happen, the high fives happen, and maybe even other positive consequences. So they need to learn cause and effect. When a person learns self-government, they learn cause and effect and how their behaviors relate to those laws of cause and effect. Correcting our children helps them better understand cause and effect and self-assess. What happens when you do a correction and they still just keep going out of control? I mean, that could happen. It would be so nice if as soon as every parent started a correction, that just stopped everything for the child and they went, oh, I'm being corrected, I need to listen. But sometimes they've gotten themselves so far back in their emotional brain that they can't stop and they're at a rage maybe. At that point, we've gotta try our best to pull them forward to that prefrontal cortex, which is a place of calmness and clear thought. So how do you pull a person from midbrain or even back brain to front brain where they can think? What you do is you have to have a strategy in place, a plan. We have two plans based on the age of the person. When a person is young, we use a calm down place. This is not a timeout. It's different than timeout. Timeout is a negative consequence. A calm down place is simply a trigger spot to get calm. We pre-teach our children ahead of time how we will use this calm down place and they know the second they are calm, they get to get off and then we talk about it, which means we do a correction and they get the opportunity to earn their negative consequence. And there are certain negative consequences that are really effective for small children. When the children are older, we use something called the rule of three. The rule of three is a dialogue that we start. Even if the child is screaming, we say the dialogue. They've been taught ahead of time exactly what this dialogue is, so they have no question what we're saying, even if it seems like they're not listening. In this dialogue, we do three things three times. We do a pre-teach and then an instruction and then a correction, but we only do it three times if it's necessary. There are certain cues that tell us that they're actually at their thinking place again. And so what we do is we help them get to that place of calmness, either using a calm down place as a trigger or the rule of three if they're older as a trigger to get them to choose calmness. Once they choose calmness and choose thinking, which means that they're able to do the five steps that we tell them they need to do to prove to us that they're to that place, then we know that they are ready to be taught. Then we can do the teaching. So even if a person goes completely out of control, which quite frankly could take a long time for some people, if they get all the way to back brain, which is the fight or flight part of the brain, it could take them 20 minutes. It could take them sometimes even a couple of hours, even a day or two for the really strong-willed ones, like some of the foster children I had come to live with me for years to get calm. But that's okay, we have strategies for how to help them and to continually invite them to go to the front brain and to go to calmness. 
Calmness is key. In fact, the more you can learn about calmness, the better. You may notice in the description of this video that there actually is a free Calm Parenting Toolkit. I highly recommend looking into that. That Calm Parenting Toolkit will give you some of the strategies that you need in order to have this calmness for yourself and for your children during these times when you're trying to help them get away from those outbursts that they're struggling with so much. I feel like we've just scratched the surface talking about emotional outbursts. It's probably important for you to click the next video, which is how to deal with temper tantrums because emotional outbursts and temper tantrums are very closely related and temper tantrums can affect people of all ages. So please click that video now so that you can get yourself on the track to calmness.